I can no longer say that I most beautifully identify with my headscarf. You fake! Way of life as cute even as hunted. Assalamu alaikum, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today's video is gonna be about why Asya actually took off her hijab. Before we continue with this video, I need you to smash this video with a huge thumbs up. I haven't even watched the video yet. How do I know if I'm gonna even like it? And I need you to subscribe to this channel as well. Let's jump straight into this video. Let me first tell you what this video is not gonna be about. This is not gonna be another bearded dude telling a woman what she should or should not be wearing. This is not gonna be a video in where a man tells a woman about how how she should be wearing the hijab. This is not gonna be a video where I try to explain and tell you all the benefits and the rewards and how beautiful you look in the hijab. That's what this video is not gonna be about. The truth is, I'm a dude who's never wore a hijab. I'm not gonna front and act and play like I know your struggle because I don't know your struggle. But I will acknowledge that you do have a struggle and that's where I wanna start off from. Oh, wow. He tell us about Asya when he has tattooed himself. You see, in the history of YouTube and that modest fashion era, Dina Toki and Asya were the first two real females to make this even happen. They blew up on YouTube for their hijab tutorials and whatnot, and that's what really set their career on the trajectory that they're on right now. But it's funny, both of them end up taking off their hijab, and I want to talk to you about why the hijab came off. I know why it came off, because their iman is weak, brother. Those are exactly the doubts and misconceptions that I want to clarify in this video. Asya recently released a video called New Beginnings, in which she explained her reasoning and this massive announcement for why she's taking off her hijab and there's two main points that stood out for me as I break her mindset down. Now remember, it's not just an advice to Asya, but it's an advice to anyone struggling with wearing their hijab. She explains that for some time now she's been dealing with anxiety and an identity crisis. So, so I'm, gonna I'm gonna start really start quickly with the anxiety. anxiety. Essentially Asya breaks down that the anxiety was caused by her being and behaving and pretty much acting like someone who she really wasn't. You fake! She's living a lifestyle that she's actually not really about nor does she really believe it. Having everyone believe that they can truly live authentically and really be themselves. And I just no longer feel like I represented that well. And she's essentially stressed about maintaining an image that's not really her. Because of the stress, it's understandable to imagine why this would affect her identity. Because she's losing herself more and more and who she really is by portraying a character on social media and YouTube. And she's finally had enough with it. She's done playing a role and she's ready to finally be herself. Her lifestyle doesn't align with nor connect with who she portrays herself to be and that's caused a lot of issues for her because she's not being her most authentic self. She's trying to carry herself in one way, yet her actions, such as getting tattoos and just overall support for things that are not really Islamic, are causing her to lose her own identity. And I think it's pretty fair for anyone who's been a fan of Asya to see a transformation that she's been going through. And it's probably caused a lot of her true fans a lot of concern because they see her slipping down a very slippery slope. And to be honest with you, I feel very bad about this. I don't feel bad, bro. These people use Islam to make some money and get some fame and when they're done with it they toss it away. That's a very popular narrative that I want to dispel. I feel bad for her because this is a struggle that she's been having for quite some time and honestly it's probably been every single day. You see when a person's beliefs and their values do not align together it causes internal conflict. According to Asya some of her beliefs are the following. That women have the choice to cover whether they want to or not. She doesn't believe it's something mandatory nor does she believe that there should be someone dictating how she should be dressing. I don't, I don't really believe, believe that, that what a woman, a woman chooses, chooses to do with, with her body, her body as, long as, as long as it doesn't, doesn't harm, harm anyone, anyone in the process. process. It's really it's not really anyone, anyone else's else. business. And when your beliefs and your values do not align together, meaning your beliefs are something and then your values are something else and they're not meeting and seeing eye to eye, it causes internal conflict and friction. This is the number one reason for spiritual pain that a lot of times we are experiencing. The disconnect of my identity, how I truly, how I truly feel, feel, and the identity, the identity that, that I, continue I continue to portray, to portray online, online. Um, 
despite having, I think, outgrown it. This is the number one cause for internal conflict and disconnect. And I'm here to tell you that Asia and many like her are experiencing this on a daily basis. Because her arguments are not based upon the Quran and the Sunnah, which is something that could never change. It's the strongest of foundations because her beliefs and her values are not established on those two things that has ended up creating doubts in her mind and in her heart. Let me break this down for you. Break it down, SQ. There's two types of main desires and doubts in human beings. The first one is called shubuhat. Shubuhat are your theological doubts. The second is called your shahawat. Your shahawat are your actual physical desires. Now let's suppose you desire to not wear the hijab. You will find a shubuhat, meaning a theological reason to fulfill your physical desire. If you desire not to wear the hijab, your theological reason might become... <laughs> Because when you have a desire not to do something, you're going to find a theological reason to match that. These two doubts go hand in hand together, and we all are battling shubuhat and shahawat at the same time. Bring it down! Uh Please don't ever do that again. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Our desires to do something causes us to look for theological loopholes that we try to justify our desires with. The real solution is to base our beliefs and our values upon the Quran and the Sunnah and not allow our religion to be based upon religious figures or YouTubers or social influencers. If you're a sister out there and all of a sudden your Iman is shaking because Oh my God, Dina? No, Asya? What am I going to do? The reason is you're basing your whole entire religion upon people who are struggling just like you and I are. Our religion is not based upon people, it's based upon the Quran and the Sunnah. Get this through your head. Asya thinks that removing a hijab will make her happier and which will allow her to discover her true identity. But unfortunately, the further we move away from Allah and His Messenger's teachings, the further we move away from discovering and identifying who we truly are. You fake! If we are not following the teachings of Allah and His Messenger, we begin to lose ourselves. My biggest advice to Asya and anyone else out there would be to reestablish your knowledge and understanding of who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. Because if you don't understand who Allah is, then you won't understand his book because you don't understand the author of this book. Because your understanding of Allah comes from people telling you, I recommend you start from learning the 99 names of Allah. Learn his names, his attributes, his qualities, his characteristics, who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is and then study the seed of the Messenger Sallallahu because if you don't understand the author and then you don't understand who the book was revealed to officially you don't understand and hold value for the Quran and now the advice to all of us out there don't bash this sister or any other sister who is struggling right now because if you make it difficult for her she will find it embarrassing to turn back to Allah because the shaitan will come to her and tell her oh you took off the hijab now you want to wear it back on what do you followers and community going to think, huh? Don't wear it anymore. It's okay. Allah will forgive you. It's not a big deal anyway. Don't let the shaitan win. Allow people to mess up and make a mistake and give them the comfortability and the flexibility to turn back from their mistakes as well. The truth is that Asiya and many like her have been struggling for a very long time and the real mistake that Asiya made was not getting the help and counseling that she needed from an actual spiritual counselor. That's why I've established a clinic care in New York City for any youth who is struggling so that they can come to the clinic and actually talk about whatever issues they're having. So many of us are struggling with mental health disease and so many spiritual issues that we never get a chance to get off of our chest. Asiya is just one of millions of people out there struggling with their Iman and spirituality and she needs help just like everyone else needs help. So my advice to her anyone else out there, contact me. I would love to help you out and help with any issues that you are having. Well, that was the video guys. I pray that you benefited and learned something from this. My humble request is to tweet or share this video with Asiya. I think that she'd really benefit. Or share this with someone who is struggling wearing the hijab. Just know that the road to Jannah involves a lot of struggle and sacrifice. You gotta struggle to get to Jannah and perhaps this struggle is your ticket and entry into Jannah. If you benefit from this video, please smash this video with a huge thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe to this channel as well. And until next time, I'm out.